January 3rd, 21. The president just says, hey, look at this. There's going to be a large amount of protesters here on the 6th. Make sure that you have sufficient National Guard or soldiers to make sure it's a safe event. Oh, my God. Trump says, hey, I don't care if you use guard or soldiers, active duty soldiers. Do whatever you have to do. Just make sure it's safe. Boom. Holy crap, it's happening. Like me and many others have been saying for years now, it looks like January 6th really was a setup. And we now know this for a fact with new transcripts that just came out today showing that President Trump had a meeting with Pentagon leadership to quote, keep January 6th safe and he was deliberately ignored. This all just broke a few minutes ago with Oversight Chairman Barry Loudermilk revealing that days before January 6, 2021, President Trump met with senior Pentagon leaders urging them to do their jobs to protect lives and property, which just proves that he did not have any plan for an insurrection. And in fact, he told the leadership that he wanted not just the National Guard, but the Army or whoever they had to put there in order to keep the event safe. And the Secretary of Defense, Miller, responds by saying quote we've got a plan and we've got it covered and real quick i just want to point out that there was a much bigger event that nobody in the media or the democrats ever talk about where there were 120,000 peaceful protesters that didn't get involved in anything that happened on the capitol grounds and that number of 120,000 just happens to be classified and never spoken of again outside of me and newsweek another revelation that probably won't surprise anyone here is that all of this news directly contradicts the conclusions of the DOD report. Steve Baker from Blaze Media broke the story today and summarized the entire transcript, so check that out. The story quickly and then give us the update. I'll give this as concisely as I can. Uh, we have been really fortunate to come into contact with some very high-ranking officials, not only uh, within, you know, Congress and the government, but also the Pentagon. And one of the most rele recent relationships that I've been able to develop and get really close to is former um, Assistant Secretary of the Army, Stacy Wardensky. And he was referred to me by a congressional aide and said, I think this guy might talk to you. He was on the teleconference call. In fact, they used his system that day when the Army are, are the Pentagon generals, the guys that answered directly to Mark Milley, who was chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the time. These were the four-star and three-star generals were on the teleconference call with the National Guard commanders at the same time discussing the, employment, the deployment of the Guard after Capitol Police Chief Sun was desperately trying to get them to come down and assist them at the cop. They're only blocks away, and, and they were, were ready. They were they were completely ready. Yeah, and and this is what the guard commanders were trying to convey. But the Pentagon pukes, the guys who answered directly to Milley, were saying. Uh, we're not so sure about the optics of this. We just assumed that it was Pelosi. No, it was passed along from these generals at the source at the Pentagon on this teleconference Jeez. call, which Stacey, uh, Assistant Secretary Stacey Wardensky was on that call, and he laid it all out to us. Representative Loudermilk, Barry Loudermilk, who uh, is the chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee, mm -hmm. He dropped a bomb just an hour ago while we're getting ready and preparing for this interview right here. And he drops a list of transcripts related to the National Guard deployment. And we've heard, you know, that Trump said that he wanted the Guard there. And we've heard Cash Patel say that and corroborate that. And there's oh been this back and forth argument. It's in writing now. Oh, my gosh. I, I want to I read one quote, just one, from General Mark Milley former chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, January 3rd, 21. The president just says, hey, look at this. There's going to be a large amount of protesters here on the 6th. Make sure that you have sufficient National Guard or soldiers to make sure it's a safe event. Oh, my gosh. Trump says, hey, I don't care if you use guard or soldiers, active duty soldiers. Do whatever you have to do. Just make sure it's safe. 
Boom. Holy shit! This is just completely nuts. Even more so because I think we all know that the media is most likely just going to cover this entire thing up. Or they'll just dismiss it as Republican right-wing propaganda. Or they'll just claim that there's no evidence and it's baseless or it's conspiracy theory or any of their other chosen deflections. And what's becoming increasingly clear is that Donald Trump was definitely not supposed to survive either of these assassination attempts because it seems kind of odd that this transcript finally comes out just days after his second attempt. Mark my words, our institutions are infested with people who are just as delusional as crooks and raw. These people have convinced themselves that any action is justified because their political opponent is literally Hitler and a threat to our democracy. It seems like there's a lot of people within our institutions that are very scared about Donald Trump getting power, but I don't think it's because they actually think he's going to do something. I think it's because they're scared of what might happen to them for what they have done. All right, folks, that's all I have on this. This is a brand new breaking story, so keep checking back for updated information. But if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.